let's go to the word of god this morning the title for the message that i've taken is god brings turn around in our situations a turn around in your situations is anybody here looking for a turn around say amen for that hallelujah it is god who changes seasons and changes everything situations and he's the one who brings turn around let's turn to the book of isaiah 54 chapter verses from 1 to 5 and i would appreciate if all of us take the bible open the bible and read the word of god aloud whatever versions you may have that's okay god's word is beautiful powerful wonderful amen shall we start come on sing oh childless woman you who have never given birth break into loud and joyful song oh jerusalem you who have never been in labor for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband says the lord enlarge your house build an addition spread out your home and spare no expense for you will soon be bursting at the seams your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle their ruined cities fear not you will no longer live in shame don't be afraid there is no more disgrace for you you will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood for your creator will be your husband the lord of heaven's armies is his name he is your redeemer the holy one of israel the god of all the earth i would like you to also read verse 17 with me but in the coming day no weapon turned against you will succeed you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you these benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the lord their vindication will come from me i the lord have spoken awesome isn't it we're going to read one more verse from the book of psalms 30th chapter verse from 11 to 12 are you ready come on let's read it together you have turned my morning into joyful dancing you have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that i might sing praises to you and not be silent oh lord my god i will give you thanks for ever and ever and ever hallelujah for this wonderful words of god amen our god is in the business of changing seasons just like we go through different seasons in a year even in our very own life we go through different seasons you agree with me but know that our god has the power to change the seasons and with the prayer we can change the seasons amen i'm here to declare that this new season is coming on your way coming to your life hallelujah a new season of favor a new season of blessings are coming to you amen i also declare that your day of miracles has come your day of favor has come your day of supernatural intervention has come and your long awaited unanswered prayers the lord is going to give you answers and reward for that are you ready to receive it Amen. God is going to bring a turn around in your situations in the seasons of your life. Amen. Maybe you're going through a very rough season. Some of you sit like that. Are you going through a rough time? Come on, cheer up because you're not in a wrong place, you're in the right place where God is in control of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And some of us go through disappointments facing different problems and challenges and sorrows and defeats and shame you know but one good news is we have a god who changes seasons you don't need to settle in there 
If you only know to yield your situations in the hands of God, he is able to change the situations. Hallelujah. He has the key to change the seasons of our life. Amen. God is has wonderful blessings for your life. And you know, if you think your boat is about to sink, make sure your boat has Jesus seated in the center. Amen. When disciples were one time crossing through that river, that sea, they thought their boat was about to sink. Didn't realize Jesus was inside. But the moment they were crying out, Jesus stood up and he he gave a command to the sea and he said, "Be silent, stand still." The very moment he gave the command, everything came into peaceful, calm situation. The same God is in my lifeboat. The same God is in your lifeboat. Do you agree with that? Amen. So God is in control of our situations. He is able to change the seasons. The very beautiful passage that we just read, we're going to see five full prophetic blessings and promises. We are going to take hold of them. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just read a beautiful passage. I would recommend you to go home and read that chapter again. That's one of my very favorite chapter. On and on and on I read it and some of the verses are memorized in my heart and I keep declaring it and enjoy the blessings of it. I recommend you to do that. Hallelujah. Go home and read the 54th chapter of Isaiah. It's full of promises of God. The very first point that I would put before you is we have a God who turns around our situations in our life. Amen. The very first verse that we just read is even in a different version it says sing o barren woman you who never bear a child burst into song shout for joy you who were never in labor because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her one who has a husband says the lot hallelujah here prophet isaiah declares and is describing the beautiful passage he says god is going to turn your life into a joyful praise and worship celebrations you're not a morning woman you're not a person sitting somewhere in the corner and singing a pity party no god says i have hold of your life and i'm going to turn your situations and put the joy in your hearts and there's going to be a joyful worship and celebrations in your life and in your home amen hallelujah so many people may have called this woman a barren woman a rejected woman forsaken desolate a misfortune so many people would have said so many different things and the person may go through different kind of experiences of shame and sufferings but you know we have a god who turns all those situations in our lives amen some of you sitting here may wonder i'm not a woman maybe you're of course you're not a woman but we all go through the different kind of challenges in life problems in the business and problems in the marriage and family and the problems in different areas around us but i have one good news the same god who turned the lives of those people in the bible is able to do it for us today amen i always used to admire hannah hannah is written in the book first samuel first chapter and second chapter the two beautiful chapters narrate about the life of hannah who was hannah she was a woman who had no children and she was accused she was tormented by another um uh, woman and uh, her life was full of pain you know the first chapter narrates like this hannah was in tears hannah was in disappointments it's a chapter full of pain but she did not continue her life like that she did one beautiful thing she went into the presence of god she 
poured out her heart to God. She gave all her problems at the feet of God. She asked the help of God. You know what God did? God turned her life around. And she became the mother of a great prophet called Samuel. In the second chapter of Samuel, we read her tears is turned into praises. Amen. Her tears of pain is turned into tears of praise. Hallelujah. Some of you sitting here this morning, you may not express it thought, but you may carry some sorrow in your heart, disappointments in your heart. I want to declare to you, the same God would turn the life around in the life of Hannah is here to turn your life around. Amen. Receive it. Say, uh, God is going to give me a turnaround in my life. My life is not going to be like this. Amen. I, I have a God who holds the uh, control of my life. Amen. When we read about Ruth, it's the same way. You know, Ruth's life is pathetic. She lost everything. She lost her husband and she had no children. And think about Naomi, her mother-in-law. She lost everything too. These two widows were in such a pathetic condition. If you have, go home and read the book of Ruth, you will know better. And you know what good thing these two women did is they made a decision. We are not going to be sitting here and just crying out, lamenting about our life situations. We are going to move, walk, and enter into the land of Bethlehem. Amen? That is a good decision they made. I tell you this morning, you have made a very good decision by coming into the house of God. This is the place what, where God turns around the lives of people. Amen? This is what Naomi and Ruth did. They walked into the land of Bethlehem. What is the meaning of Bethlehem? Is the land of food. No more poverty. Amen? A land of uh, prosperity. So the moment they entered, Naomi didn't understand. People started saying, hey, welcome, Naomi. You're back home. But Naomi said, please don't call me Naomi. You know what? Naomi means sweetness. She said, my life is no more sweet. My life is full of bitterness. You better call me Mara, she said. No, no, no. God did not leave her in that condition. The good thing is God turned their life around. Amen? God brought a new chapter and they became the history makers and they joined the lineage of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for that. The same God is here this morning. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, I may look at you ordinary person today, but if you only yield your life to God, he's going to turn your life around. You can become a history maker. Amen. You will become an outstanding person. The same God who blessed Hannah, the same God who lifted up Naomi and Ruth is here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you have come here looking for a job in Coimbatore. And you have been searching a lot and you did not find one. Maybe you're here facing different other challenges and problems and things like that, you know. But don't you worry. There is going to be a turnaround in your situations. Amen. Hallelujah. It is God who's going to lead you for a better life. God will never leave you in the state where you are. Amen. Amen. But one good thing what we have to do is give your situations, hand over your life as it is with failures and disappointments and sorrows and problems and challenges. Leave it with him. He will take hold of you and he will turn everything for better into a glorious situation. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when you read about the Joseph life, I always used to marvel about this man, Joseph. What a wonderful man he was. His life was so pathetic. His own brothers hated him. And his own brothers did evil to him. They threw him into a pit and they thought his life is ended and he has no more future. But God did not leave him there. God picked him up from the pit and you know where God placed him finally? He came into the palace of Egypt and he became the prime minister of Egypt. The day came when the same brothers who did evil came near him and they were receiving help from this Joseph. What a beautiful character Joseph had. 
knowing that this is, these are the same brothers who did evil to me in my past life, it's my turn to give my vengeance. No, he did not do that. He showed up. He, he demonstrated his love for them and his godliness, character for them. You know, the day came, these brothers finally came to know, this is Joseph. This is the guy that we all mistreated him. But when the day came, they all were so afraid. You know what Joseph said to them in the book of Genesis 50th chapter? He says, you intended to do evil, but God turned it all for good. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Some of you are sitting here. You know your relatives would have hurt you, mistreated you. Your own family members could have mistreated you. Many people could have mistreated you. You cannot do the same back to them. You need to stand up like Joseph. Then God will turn everything around. You will not be under them. You will be above them. And God will turn around all situations. All for good. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Are you with me? You know, when I was a student many, many years back, and I went to Agra as a student missionary because my sister and my brother-in-law, they were working as a missionaries, a missionary. And they both were in good jobs, but they resigned everything. They wanted to serve God and pioneer church in the city of Agra. When I say Agra, everybody knows Taj Mahal is there. Well, when they were there, I went to study in that city as a student missionary also to support them in their ministry. But there were many oppositions for their church growth. And there were many people mad at them starting the church. One Saturday, when my sister cooked a beautiful lunch and placed it on a dining table, when we were all about to eat, about 20 young men rushed into the house madly, roughly, they were so angry with us and they threw out all the things from the house, right from the fridge to the television, everything. They said, get out of this place. You're not going to run a church here. Get away. That was the scream. They were shouting. They were doing everything nonsense to us. You know, we just stood out in the garden, just praising God. Just thanking God. Me and my sister got hold of our hands together. We were reciting 91 Psalm, what we have learned from our childhood. You know, I never forget that day. That was the day when we thought, oh, the whole city looks like it's against us. But you know, all of a sudden something happened. Somebody should have phoned to the police department. The police jeeps came and inspectors came. All these 20 young men vanished all of a sudden. We didn't know where they went. We thought, wow, what do we do? But the college that I studied, the people, students, everybody heard, some of them about uh, 30, 40 came running and did everything back in order uh, with the things back in the house. And there we are standing in tears, thanking God, praising God. We don't understand what is happening, Lord, but we know you are in control of this situation. We thank you and we praise you. You know what happened after that problem? The church began to grow more greatly than before. The good news is the whole city came to know about this problem. And people who were looking for a good church found out this is the church that we want to be a part of it. They began calling us, where is this church that was affected, that was uh, disturbed? We want to come to the church. From the next Sunday onwards, the church became doubled up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what I say, God turns things around. The same God is here. Whatever situations you are in, is able to turn it for good. Amen. Sometimes we may not understand what is happening, but just simply trust God. He is a trustworthy God. My second point to you this morning is, we have a God who has no limits. There are no limits to your borders, he says. He's a God of unlimited blessings. Amen. He wants to bless his children in unlimited portion. 
Let's read the verse 2 and 3. Uh, are you with me? Come on. I want you to follow the verses. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your sticks. Amen. Hallelujah. God has a promise for you this morning that you're going to expand. God wants to extend your borders. Hallelujah. Whatever field you are in, this is a promise word for you. God wants to expand you. There is no limit for God's blessings. There is no limit for God's portions. That is the greatness of our God. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no limit to your borders. And he wants to expand your territories. You know, when you look at the life of Abraham, Abraham was a man called out by God. And when he followed God, he had no, nothing with him. No, no, any uh, treasures or nothing. He just simply trusted God and he followed him. And, but God was trustworthy. And, but only one thing he should have, what he did was he brought Lot, his knees along with him. But the moment came, God said, hey, separate Lot. Let him be separated. But the moment Lot was separated, God began to deal with him. God brought Abraham out and he said, hey, Abraham, look out. Lift up your head and look out. And that's what is written in the book of Genesis 13 chapter, verses 14 and 15. God said, look to the north, south, east and west. See as far as you can. And all that you can as far to the end, I'm going to give it to you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Do you believe the same God is alive today? The God of Abraham is our God. Hallelujah. All that he did was just simply trusted God. And he followed the principles of God. And God blessed him. God blessed his generation like the stars of heaven. His generation still stands. Amen. As the Abrahamic generations, the same God is alive. Ruth, when she walked into the fields of Boaz, she was a servant girl. But the same Ruth became the master, the master's wife of the field. That's what God does. His works are amazing. When David was an ordinary shepherd boy, but his heart was longing for God. He got hold of God. The same David, God blessed him and made him the king of Israel. Think about Alphen Esther. She was nobody one day, but when she was an obedient girl and walked into the palace according to the guidance what Mordecai, her uncle, gave, and you know, as a humble girl, God blessed her and left her, and she became the queen of 127 provinces of Persia. The same God is alive this morning. Amen. In the book of Hebrew, 6th chapter, verse 14 says, God said to Abraham, Abraham, surely, blessing I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you, said the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe the promises to Abraham also belongs to us? Every word that is written in the Bible is for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the same God who blessed and expanded the territory of Abraham is able to bless us. There was a man called Jabez. About him it is written in the book of 1 Chronicles 4 chapter verses 9 and 10. Jabez means sorrow. He was a disappointment to his mother. But he did not want to do, settle his life for that. He cried out to the God, God of Israel. And he said, Lord, that you would bless me. And you will extend my territories, Lord. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from all evil. And when he cried out to God, God answered all his requests. All the four blessings was granted to him. And he was able to have an extended, expanded territory.
territories. And Jabez became honorable among his brothers, says the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Do you want to claim these prophetic words and blessings to your lives? Lift up your hands and say, The God of Abraham is my God. The God of Jabez is my God. I believe all that God has designed for me plan for me. I welcome it into my life and I need it and I claim it in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. May not we give a good hand to the Lord. The God who has given all these promises is able to fulfill it to our lives. He's a God of unlimited blessings. You know, we are married for over 40 years. But the time when I got married, when I came to Coimbatore, our church was 200 numbers in size. 200. Like this. That was the first church. I was, we started in a shed. I mean, my husband, my parents-in-law, they were in the shed. But we just simply trusted God. We took hold of God. And God again and again gave this word to my husband and myself. And he said, do not limit me. I am a God of unlimited blessings. We began to stretch our faith. We began to stretch our dreams and began to claim for more blessings. We said, Lord, we are not going to be satisfied with 200. We want the church to grow up to 1,000. But that place where we were was not enough to hold 1,000 people. At the most, we could have had only 350. Then we had to look for a bigger place. And that was the time God showed this place. And when we built the first phase of church, people started to laugh and say, hey, why do you want to build a church for 1,200? You don't even have 500 numbers right now. We said, no, we have a great God who has promised that he's an unlimited uh, blessings that he has in hold for us. Okay, let's see, they said. Okay, we moved in here. And all that we did was just follow what God said. We began to keep doing. God began to bless and multiply. Multiply the numbers and size and everything. And then the church outgrew and uh, we had to do multiple services. And it was not enough. We had to expand this side. We need to expand that side. We need to expand this side. You know, in, in the beginning, all that wasn't there. For the, all those who have come uh, in the later years may understand. Only a little space, this space of land was there. But everything was what God promised. Literally happened and he expanded the territory. Give him a good hand of praise. Even in numbers, God from 250, we are now 7,000. But we are not satisfied here. You know why? Because our God is a God of unlimited sources of blessing. Hallelujah. Now we are claiming for a church of 10,000. Turn to your friend and say, as long as you're alive, keep dreaming big. Because we have such a God. Amen. If you know how big your God is, then you start dreaming big things. If you only think he's a petty little God, just enough for my monthly needs and today's needs, and you will settle for that. What kind of future do we want? Amen? He's a God of unlimited blessings. I'm telling you, people who are seated here are experiencing already, but I want to tell you, God has much more for you. Much more for you. Turn to your friend and say, God has much more. He's a God of much more. There is no end to the way God blesses his people. Amen. Hallelujah. So God wants to bless you with more greater blessings. Hallelujah for that. And I've already shared one time. This verse, the book of Isaiah 64, 4, is my favorite verse. Some of you may jump up and say, not only yours, also mine. Of course, every one of us, every word is given for everybody. And you know, I got hold of that verse and I keep on claiming it all my life. It's become my life promise. Amen. So you can read it. For since the world began. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen 
a god like you for those who wait for him if the same verse is repeated in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 we can also read that that is what the scriptures mean when they say no i has hmm. seen no ear has heard and no mind has imagined what god has prepared for those who love him amen hallelujah do you love him do you love him so the promise is for you hallelujah no i as seen no ear has heard and no mind has imagined what god has prepared for you and for your future hallelujah take hold of the blessings of god this is what we are doing amen our god is a great god and he keeps on telling not only to us but to every individual here do not limit me turn to your friend and say god is telling you don't limit him don't limit him his name is el shaddai you know what is el shaddai means god of much more great blessings more than enough he will bless you with more than enough and he is most sufficient hallelujah hallelujah may god bless you with these words my third point is god of covenants who's true to the promises you know when you read the verse fifth verse is beautiful the fifth verse it says for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer is the holy one of israel he is called the god of the whole earth amen in just one verse in one verse package of one verse about seven attributes the names of god is presented there seven names one is god is your maker second one is he is the husbandman the third one is he is the lord of hosts fourth one is he is the holy one of israel fifth one is he is the redeemer sixth one is he is the lord of all the earth seventh one is is the god of compassion hallelujah do you want to take hold of these promises and he is a covenant making god he is true to his word what he has said he will fulfill in us in our lifetime he says i am your maker god is your maker amen hallelujah do you know that he is the one who saw you already in your mother's womb he formed you in your mother's womb and he is the one he says you belong to me and i am with you i will never let you down says the lord amen in the book of isaiah again 44 second verse god says to jacob you know what he says the lord who made you and helps you says do not be afraid o jacob my servant o dear israel my chosen one says the lord amen and he says i'm the one who will uh, pour the water into the dry lands i'm the one who will bring the rain upon the parched lands i'm the one i will pour out my spirit upon the descendants i will pour the blessings upon your children says the lord hallelujah keep receiving the promises of god and he says i am your maker the one who has made you is the one who is all interested about your whole life amen do you know he's the one who chose you you are not here by accident you are here by the choice of god you have become the child of god by the choice of god hallelujah hallelujah he is your maker and he will be with you right from the birth till the end he will take complete control of your life hallelujah well the next thing is he is your husband man i love this word what does husband man means a husband's responsibility for is for three things mainly that is is your protector provider and cherisher god says i will take all those roles and i will be your protector for all men and women this is the promise for everybody god says i will be your protector and i will be your provider and i will be your cherisher says the lord hallelujah i will be with you and i will comfort you i will be 
with you all through your life. Amen? Even in the world, no man, no person, no father, no mother, no husband, no wife can ever be with you all 24 hours in a day. It's only God who has promised this verse is able to be with us. Amen? He also says, I'm the Lord of hosts. What do you mean by the Lord of hosts? He's the captain of the battle. He's the Lord of the angelic hosts. He's the one who will do all the battles for us. Amen? He's the one who will always stand before us. And he will take care of all the problems that comes against us. And he will make us more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And he has never lost one battle. Oh, it's always when he's on the lead, it's always victorious. Hallelujah. Do you know God is by your side? And he knows all that you're going through. And he is standing with you. He will do the battle for you. He will voice up for you. Amen. He will bring victory in your life. Hallelujah. The next thing is he's the Holy One of Israel. He will not lie, says the Lord. It's a beautiful verse. He's not a man to lie, not a son of man to repent, says the word of God. He will never go back on his word. And whatever he has promised, he will never let down the word. Amen? How many of you have received the promises in your life and are waiting for its fulfillment? Say it out. My God is the Holy One of Israel. He will never fail in his promises. Hallelujah. Whatever he has promised, he knows the right timing. He will fulfill it. Amen? Hallelujah. He's your redeemer. I love this word redeemer. This is what Job cries out. I know my redeemer lives. And I will see him at the uh, end of the day. He will stand and he will be my redeemer. I tell you he's your redeemer right now too. This is what Ruth experienced in her life. Boaz was a redeemer who stood by her side and rescued her life and gave her bright life. Amen. The same Jesus is by your side. He will bless you. He will be your redeemer. He will give you a great bright light. Amen. Hallelujah. The next one is he's the Lord of all the earth. The whole earth is under his control. I love this. Everything that is happening is happening with his knowledge, not without his knowledge. I love this verse from the book of Jeremiah 32 and verse 27. I have experienced that verse and I have proved it how true these words are. You know what God says? Behold, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me, says the Lord. I tell you, whatever situations you are here, take hold of this promise and say, Lord, you are the Lord of the whole earth. And you know everything that is happening. You will never let things down. Amen? He will do a miracle for you. And he is holding the whole universe. You and me are nothing. When we were kids in the Sunday school, we used to sing a song. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. He's got my mommy and daddy. He's got my brother and sister. He's got you and me. I used to love that song. It's not just a song, it's the reality. My God has the whole world in his hand. Amen? He's the God of all the earth. Hallelujah. He's holding the whole universe. The last thing is, he's the God of compassion. His compassions fail not. He has a tremendous compassion over every one of us. In the book of Psalm 30, Verse 5 says, his anger lasts for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. God's favor is for a lifetime. Amen? God has a favor upon your life, and he wants to bless you. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, says the Lord. You may go through little hardships or problems just for a little while, but God says, that is just temporal, 
but the blessings that I'm going to give you is permanent. The favor that I'm going to give you is for permanent, God says. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalm 23, 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. My husband loves saying that when you leave the church, two people are going to follow you. Two people will be always following you for the rest of your life. Who are the two people? Don't Goodness and mercy. They will follow you all the days of your life. I love this song. I think this is the song sung by C.C. Vinams. She says, from the moment I wake up until I lay my head down, your mercy, Lord, your goodness is amazing. I tell you, from the moment you wake up and the moment you sleep, even in the moment you're sleeping, his protection, his hand, his compassion, his grace is surrounding you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, my time is going up and I'm going to give up two points and I'm going to close with this. And I'm going, to, when I get a next chance, and I will continue the other points. And I'm just finishing with this. Our God is a God of compassion. Amen. Well, take hold of this whole chapter. When you go home, read the 17th verse. It's beautiful. Awesome. No weapon that's formed against you shall ever prosper. No tongue that rises against you can ever overcome you. You will put them all down. Amen. Hallelujah. When God is by your side, who can ever stand against you? Last week we were in Israel and we had a wonderful time. We had just went there for prayer with our siblings and we just had a wonderful time. One good thing what we hear and see in Israel is they have many enemies around the country. Everybody is around them against them. But you know, God's divine protection is above them. So nobody can overcome them. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. It's a prophetic country. So nobody can overcome them. The beauty one time what we witnessed was, not this trip, previous trips was, we heard the sound of missiles coming and everybody were running to hide. But you know, by the time the missile could ever come, rise, the raiders of Israel can detect and go and attack right the moment in their own territory, in the enemy's territory itself, and destroy it. Isn't that beautiful? And I read this verse, I could relate very well. No weapon that's formed against you will ever prosper. And sometimes the Israeli uh, uh, um, I mean, military will go to the place where the enemies produce their weapons, they will go and attack and destroy. Everything will be gone into ashes. This is what my God is doing. Amen? No evil schemes, no attacks of the enemy, no plans of the evil can ever touch you. Because God says, no weapon that's formed against you shall ever prosper. Shall we all stand up this morning? We have a wonderful God who turns our situations around, who changes seasons of our life, and he will turn our mourning into dancing. God is here to turn our sorrows into joy. Sickness to health, our defeat to victory, our disappointments into God's appointments. Amen? God wants to bring our situations around. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want to experience that turnaround situations in your life? Are you ready for that? Now I will live, ask you to lift your hands towards the God of the whole earth and he has the keys to change the situations of your life. That is the best thing that we can do. That's what Hannah did. That's what Ruth did. That was David cried out to the Lord. That's what Abraham did. Without that, you cannot see the turnaround in your situation. All that you need to do is simply call out to the name of God. Simply trust in him. He holds the, uh, your future. And he holds the keys for your seasons of life. And he's able to turn everything upside down for you. Come on church. And I want you to lift up your heads and look up to God and start praying. Would you open your mouth and say, Lord, I need a turnaround. 
Yes, yes, yes. This is your moment to pray. Speak to God. He delights in your conversation, in your relationship with Him. Come on, say, Lord, I have this problem. I want to see a change in my children's life, in their future, Lord. I want to see a change in my business field, O oh Lord. I want to see a change in this and that. And come on, every problem, bring it to him. He's able to move it around. Turn it around for you this morning. Hallelujah. He has the keys of David. If he opens, no man can shut it. If he shuts the door, no man can open it. He is the author and finisher. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the God of beginning and the end. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. I would be appreciated if you just call out the name of Jesus, everybody. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Come on, church. Jesus. Jesus. Never feel shy to call out the name of Jesus. Jesus. He is the one. Oh, he has the, all the power and authority over everything in this world. He says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything, anything, anything too hard for me? There is nothing impossible. Rabba mama shikala rabba On and on and again. We have seen so many miracles God doing in our lives, in the lives of other people. That's why we have so much confidence to give you this word this morning. Our God is about to change seasons of your life. Amen. The same God who brought joy into the life of Hannah is able to bring the joy and celebrations and praises in your lives, in your situations, in your homes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we praise you for who you are to our lives, oh God. You are God. Oh, the supreme authority over our lives, oh God. And you are our maker, your cre our creator, our redeemer, Lord, our provider, our protector, our everything, oh God. We love you and rely on you. We yield ourselves, our families, our situation, our business, our tomorrows, our future, everything, Lord. We secure them in your hands, Lord take control of everything. I pray Lord you will rest your hand upon every brother, every sister who are standing here. Take care of their lives oh God. In whatever situation they want to see a change. I pray Lord you will bring it. A change for the better. You will bring joy in their lives oh God. You will honor them and you will bring glory Lord. Bless them. Thank you for your God of unlimited portion of blessings. Thank Thank you Lord. There is no limit with you oh Father. We praise you for who you are. We love you. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on church. Let's give a good hand to the Lord.